Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Now today we're taking another look at the Ryzen 5 1600 AF variant. This is the 12 nanometer Ryzen 5 1600 and we are overclocking it but this time instead of using the basically very uh, underperforming uh, Wraith Stealth cooler we're going to be using an overkill liquid freezer 2 from Arctic. Now overclocking the Ryzen 5 1600 AF variant is basically just like overclocking any Ryzen part. There does seem to be a very uh, sort of a defined limit on how far you can push these things before you really start to see a, uh, a, a loss of efficiency where you're really bumping up the voltage a lot to get very, very marginal gains. Now the nice thing about this cooler paired with this CPU is first of all, the Liquid Freezer 2 is typically pretty reasonable on the pricing front. You can see links down below in case you want to see the current pricing for this setup. But basically this is one of the generally better priced AIO coolers and this is the 240 millimeter variant which does have a super thick radiator over here and it, it, it actually works really really well. Um, I also reviewed this cooler a while back so I'm, I really like this cooler paired with the Ryzen 5 1600 AF because you're getting great value on the CPU and actually a pretty good value here on the cooler as well. Now with the 1600 here moving from a 14 nanometer part down to a 12 nanometer part, we're taking an already efficient CPU with an overkill cooler like this and really making it even more efficient when it comes to power usage. So what we're really seeing here is a cooler that can absolutely handle almost any reasonable voltage you're going to be throwing at the Ryzen 5 1600. And that's uh, really what I expect to be the trend when I actually get into testing. I don't expect really to be limited almost at all all by the thermals of this. I expect to ba basically be able to push whatever uh, voltage I really want to. The thing that I am concerned about being limited with is I have no idea what the binning process is for the 1600 AF. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get a golden sample 4.3 gigahertz type overclock or if I'm gonna be able to get the standard Zen Plus 4.2-ish gigahertz overclock across all six cores and 12 threads, but that's what we're aiming to find out. Now we are running the memory down at 3000 megahertz even though it's rated at 3600 megahertz when I was testing this CPU with the stock cooler with this motherboard this is an x370 motherboard I found that the memory was actually a little bit unstable even at 3200 megahertz so I do have the memory on this thing clocked down to 3000 megahertz and uh, yeah we're basically gonna be throwing some voltage at it and see how high we can get those clocks to survive a 10 minute stress test in Ida as well as a Cinebench R20 run and if I can pass both those sort of tests, I think this thing would be stable enough to call it good for day-to-day -day use. Now, I'm not going into a crazy test where I'm going to actually push it overnight or anything like that to really ensure full stability. Uh, if you obviously are looking for something that is going to be a workflow CPU and you need absolute stability then you should absolutely take a little bit more time to overclock this thing and find where you can actually get a reasonable voltage with 24 7 type stability we're not going that far today i really just want to see how far i can push this thing knowing that i have a lot of thermal headroom with this cooler i want to see how high the clocks can get while still keeping the voltages at least a little bit reasonable so with all that said let's get into the fail montage or at least what i expect to be a bit of a fail montage with uh overclocking and seeing the system crash multiple times and eventually we'll find a stable clock speed and voltage.
So it's sort of conclusion time with this overclock. I was in fact able to get the Ryzen 5 1600 AF variant to 4.2 gigahertz and at least reasonably stable across all six cores and 12 threads. Though to get it past that Cinebench run, I did have to bump the voltage all the way up to 1.45 volts, which is definitely a little bit higher than I would want to run a Ryzen 12 nanometer part at 24 seven. So if this was my system and I was planning on just running it sort of as is without giving it any sort of exotic cooling or anything like that. I was just wanting to run it as my day-to-day -day system. I would probably clock this thing down to something like 4.1 gigahertz instead of 4.2 and thereby allowing myself to save quite a bit on the voltage because I was hitting that point where the CPU could definitely go higher. It was just requiring more and more and more and more voltage to get it stable at those clock speeds. And I was able to get this to run 10 minutes in IDA 64 no problem at 1.425 volts. The problem was that Cinebench run crashed out about, uh, I don't know, a third of the way through when I ran it at 1.425 volts. So 1.45 volts is the mark for Cinebench R20 on this particular sample with this particular cooler on this particular motherboard. Obviously though, if you pick up this CPU, Everything is going to vary drastically depending on your sample for the CPU, the motherboard you're using, maybe bio stability, RAM stability, everything does come into account, especially when you're pushing these CPUs to really the, the highest possible clock that you can get at reasonable voltages and reasonable temperatures. Fortunately though, if you did notice the screenshot there, the temperatures on this system were absolutely fine. Running in the mid 60s, even at that kind of voltage for this system is just an awesome result. Basically gives me confidence in saying, if you're gonna overclock one of these CPUs and you want a cost effective AIO that's gonna give you fantastic performance, this AIO rocks. I love it, it's awesome. I again have the 240 millimeter variant. It does come in a few different variants though. So that has been a little bit more testing on the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, but I do wanna hear from you guys. What do you think about this particular CPU, is this something that's on your radar, especially for those of you that are in the United States and seem to have a little bit better access to the AF variant than maybe other places around the world. Obviously, this is gonna compare very closely to a Ryzen 5 2600. So even if this is not available, this specific 1600 AF variant is not available in your country, maybe then look at the Ryzen 5 2600 if that's the best sort of deal available for this generation of Ryzen CPU. But let me know what you think of the overclock. Is this something you'd be interested in? Basically, just let me know all your comments. Just put them down below. And of course, if you liked the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things extremely helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.